And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. A little bit of a different venue. Uh, so bear with me. Background's not as pre normal as, but it's just as bright. Um, also, thanks to AppRite, I now have a new haircut. Um, today, we're going to be doing a quick review of all the things that we've built, all the things that we've done, as we're getting ready to publish our first version of Plug out to the world. Uh, Plug.io domain is set up, uh, plk.io, we've got public sharing, we've got a whole bunch of things. So what I wanted to do is take a moment to go through, or take this hour to go through the items that we've built um, and how we did everything, go back over some of the patterns that we use, like the provider pattern, some of the UI elements and things like that, answer any questions that might come up as we're also using this as a chance to double check all of our work to make sure that there's nothing that we've missed so that on Thursday, uh, I'll have some server stuff magic set up so that we can go ahead and publish it and let people start trying it out, trying to use it, trying to, should we say, public alpha it. Uh, so looking forward to diving in and seeing what all that we've done and continuing on after that. So thank you for joining me and we can get started now. All right. So the cool thing about this is we also, right before we joined, I started also jumping into Boop. There we go. All right. Um, so we're at our dashboard. Here's our images. Remember, we've created this. We're going to open up an incognito window as well. We're going to do a local host 152 slash user slash west slash crazy cat. It's going to do a little loading magic and boom, there's our image. This is what we share. Now we can like it. And we're going to check that. See, this is why we go through things. Um, one final check is missing scope account where it shouldn't have done that. Let's go back to our, do, 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 do. there's landing, here's photos, but we want this one right here. Now, a little bit smaller screen, so uh, I think I can change this. See. Can I make my built-in display resolution? There we go. That's gonna be hard to see. can you guys can everybody see that all right? Go ahead and full size this too. So all right. That is not that much space. Okay. All right. So let me move me up and out of the way. There we go. And now I'm going to do my best. There we go. So now we're going to start going through the files. Everybody sees that. Everybody can see what's going on there. Like I said, I'm in a little bit of a remote right now. So my resolutions are a little off than what you guys are normally used to. So if you have any questions, issues, sound included, um, please send a message to chat. And I'll make sure that I can get that taken care of. Right now, we are going through and looking at uh, everything gets called by use account. Session art. So we want to be able to hit like. Null is not an object. So let's go back to our like and dislike. I might just have to use the editor screen. All right. So what we're doing here is when a user comes in to the public scene, there we call the API. We don't need use account up here. And we need to say, but we actually we do need use account. Just kidding. Wow. Resolution is painful. Do we can do here? 
What would a live stream be without resolution issues? See if we can get it resolved. Okay, so we're gonna work some magic. Do these things switch to all of us. Whoa. Ah, much better. There we go. Now we can actually see everything. So there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking this way decently uh, until this session. All right, so now we're going to get post. We look down here, we see uh, we're getting null back for a session in the user ID. So what we need to do is if session or session length is equal to zero, that doesn't make any sense. So we need to do if not a session, there we go. Uh, let's clear this out. User ID. That's right here. We need to call. question please share the oh yeah sure thing and just to let you know uh every day after i run these videos i post them to youtube as well and inside the youtube description i give a full list of all the things that are being used um i will take a moment however to give you the github for this There is the GitHub, and you can also see the link to, uh, and the link to the YouTube channel will be there. You go. So getting back into, it, we are trying, we are troubleshooting a little bit of our file sharing issue, our image sharing issue. Um, so let's pull this over to the side. Let's look at it. We don't need. Um, the scope of account. All we were doing for account is saying that if it was an account, if it is an account, we need to get to it. So we need to look right here on 62. So inside of here, we're doing if account is equal to null. Um, and otherwise, we don't need to do anything. Right there is line 87. So that's a different error that we're working with. So line 87 is right here. So session 
we need to do object.keys includes it's the first one so we're going to change this into a tier operator so we're going to say user id if session equal to null then we need to oops Already returning user ID. Good call. All right, so this doesn't need this on the end of it. Now we're still going to loop. So let's break it again just to make it stop. Hmm. Of course, yes. See, we're still having some weird issues with promise and user ID value, but if the object is null, then we need to get one. So we'll look at our effects. If session is null, it should call setup user, then post and list likes. Now we can come back here and we'll say, let's longhand it for now. If session is equal to null, wait, set up user. That's what I need to work. Because user ID will be undefined. So we need to get a user ID, even if it's a guest session ID. So let's change this back to null. We need to solve that problem first.
break. Okay. When things change. Line 57. Oh, Biowitz, my friend, you're back. What do you see about line 57? Mm, we should log that. We want it to fail. Did you see something specific on 57 Biowitz? This was so working last week. My, I mean, if you didn't, I mean, go back and see the YouTube video. I have proof. Um, <laughs> we have likes, set likes, posts, set posts. We use state. We gave it a type just to be explicit. Um, but I'll probably just remove that anyway. But why is it failing? permissions issue. Let's see. Um, session already, but that's what I'm saying. So if I come up here and do, I need to use session. No, session's null. Oh, wait. Do we have a naming problem? We do have a naming problem. Your session has already created that. Let's change this to why do we need session set session? Because if we didn't have a session, we need anonymous sessions. Why was this working before? Let's do session set session. There it is. Because the provider's already put those in place. So, anybody want to Right. So, what I'm thinking is we need to remove this session thing for it, that everybody who comes to the site, if they don't already have an existing session, what if we automatically give everyone an anonymous session? That way, you session is doing its job and we're not doing such a heavy lift in this one. So, just to prove the point of what I'm thinking, though, I am going to use 
rename all of these. We have a naming conflict. Now that's one of the things with the provider pattern you could say is creates a lot of fun issues. I still have that hard coded. No. That's right. Okay, so let's do a little refactoring work here. Let's take and grab the anonymous user stuff here. And we're going to make sure that everybody who comes into a session here has an anonymous session. This probably needs to be redone again, but okay. First off, boom, scary stuff. I wanna know why it was working. So yeah, you may hear some noise in the background It's because we're in a big open lofty type house. Um, and we'll throw the air. So we, if we don't have, so in the list session, we need the first off we need to say, oh no. Yes, it is. Why did you? Why, oh, we had an app right. You know what? We had a cloud upgrade. Update. Not upgrade. Oh, wow. Interesting. Oh my goodness. Um, hold on. Let's go back to. Forgot to change it back. All right. That's right. I moved off my server. Remember. All right, back to our problem. So many apps get big, you know? All right, so let's go back to index. Let's go to get. List sessions. Oh. If that throws first.
How crazy do you guys want to get? Want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Sometimes I do crazy stuff just to try to see um, how crazy I can make things look. See, there's zero there. Oh. Should never get to. What is the catch
so much. Oh, yes, that's right. How's it going, D. Thompson? Yay. Boom. We did it. We did it. We did it. Oh, my gosh. So much headaches. So, likes should actually be. Mm, let's change this up a little bit. I'm always a big fan of these big things. There's our one like. Because I already liked it. So, what we need to do, we are liking it again. All right, so now I can finally get back to doing the walkthrough. Or is there any other questions anybody has, or, or not other questions, I haven't asked any yet, but any questions or anything that anyone needs before I go through the quick walk through the code base? Um, so that we can be ready for next week's preliminary alpha test for the public. I will actually be publishing pluck.io onto a server. I'm going to do dev.pluck.io. So it's our developer, our beta or something. I don't know. Um, and then we can try it out from there. To see exactly what we're, you know, make see people can use it and can report bugs. You guys can during the sessions you can hit it because what we're going to start doing is start going through once we get the preliminary alpha version up, we can go through and start doing some refactoring, some proper, you know, error handling and things like that where we can actually display errors to the user correctly uh, and stuff like that. So, any other questions? And if not, I'm going to dive back into some of the patterns that we're using. We're going to walk right back through the app. In super time, all right, let's do it. Um, so first off, we have our app where our layouts are can our, our layouts change automatically based on the session. So if there's a user, if there's a current user and he's available, um, our layouts will adjust accordingly. Now, this pattern, I may be changing my style after doing plug because this pattern is pr proved it's over here for me oh, you guys are there um but i may be changing it based on the some of the cumbersome stuff on this i'm going to design it, the template redesign the template a little bit like that um and but right now it says if if see our url has the word user in it so it says if if the url contains user or the pref or the path or the uri whatever you want to call it if it contains user we don't really, you know, if it does here, we're going to hand you off to the public um, components. If not, we're going to use the landing or the user. Now, landing and user are it's just the user router. So it's just like a general layout that we can put around the user. So like your dashboard for a logged in user or a landing page would be your, um, your login, your top bar with the contact us or about us. Those kind of things are what I consider landing pages. And it automatically switches based on the user so that I could kind of set it and forget it. Work smarter, not harder. Uh, dry. Um, D. Thompson, if I'm forgetting any of the cliches of doing something so you don't have to do it again. Lazy developer. Uh, just let me know. Or anybody, Biowitz, whatever. Then up next, we got components. These are common use components that I've wrapped up using Chakra's UI. So it makes it a lot easier for me. Again, the same principle as before. Write once, try to not write it again. And that's right here. So you got a dialog. I give it all of the things and it works. We'll show a usage of that. Dynamic is a text field that can be dynamically set. So I can make it a new text field. It's basically for a form generator. Um, though it's not using this project, empty is the big empty view if you have an empty list. Whereas, like, if I have no photos, error is the error view. Whee! Um, 
And then number field only, password field, select field, switch field, text. All right, all right. So let's break it all. There we go. Um, why are you red? What's wrong with you? It is. Oh. Happy now. We're all green. Trap is clean. All right, so then we go into our data component. So data is my shortcut to all the things. So this right here is a temporary cache. It's memory. It's just, a, it's just an object that I use. I have with some getters and setters wrapped around it for semantic sugar. Um, but you may use a cache for anything throughout the application. And because we are reactive or we react and we're using provider pattern, this makes us have use cache and then I can go through and set and get and then I can go somewhere else and get it out of the cache later on in the application since we are a progressive web app or a single page application. Um, there's just an index because I have. So here's also that cache style right here, which I could just refactor one day into being its own thing. Or I can use local storage. Local storage is your local little database key value store that lives on your browser. Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, up next we have, there's your session, which is just a shortcut to make it pretty. And then settings is just, so if you go into the dashboard, you collapse the menu, you expand the menu. It remembers. So now if I, anytime I come back to it or if I like refresh it, it'll be this way. If I refresh it, it'll be that way. Um, so just some nice shortcuts. Now documents is using app right models. Let me go ahead and throw this link in here. Uh, app right models is a lightweight wrapper that I put to app rights document or slash database SDK. Um, just to give it some semantic sugar as well, but to also introduce data structures so that you can create a model or a type that is reflective upon what you want your model to look like. I got going back and forth between the dashboard. If I forget a property um, was not the fun, most fun thing in the world. So I wrote a wrapper to it. So I could create my own little models like you see right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can see right here, I create a document for that model. And then it makes it a lot easier to see the representation that is a document. Now, thank you. Um, then up next after documents, we got locale, which is kind of like, it just exports current, current, the branding, the name, share some photos, this nice little setup things that I did. These are your actual pages that you're seeing. So first off, we have our landing page. Here's your login form. I, tr I try to divide things up very specifically. And again, this is my style. This is not necessarily the style of AppRite or anybody else. This is my chosen style. Um, so these are the forms that you log in with. I use Formic. I just got out of habit and started using it and never stopped using it. I know there's some other ones out there. In fact, I want to write my own. It kind of works like AppRite models where it can generate the forms for you. Um, photos. Photos is a little more involved. That's this view, what you're seeing right here. The, the, the modal that pops up with my crazy kitty. Um, the upload modal allows me to do this which is a hand thing. Um, so we can go through this. First off, what you're seeing is the grid. If you look, I try to make the components as little as possible. This is a good example of that. There's literally a one liner here, a map, because I need, I like layers. I'm, I'm an onion. That's what, you, that's what Shrek said. Um, donkey. So then we have our right here, the link box. Again, I'm using Chakra UI. Um, which I'll link also is also linked in the template uh, readme file as well as the readme file for Pluck.io. 
But this is just calling some functions to do some loading of images, deleting image, loading the metadata for each of the images. Um, and because cloud doesn't have relationships yet, I can't load it all at once. <clears throat> Christy. So I had to make a separate query. Now, these are the buttons for shares and likes. They are not functional inside of here yet. I thought I was going to make it so you could do it. Share will need to come out. We'll need to add share. I think I'm just going to copy the URL to your clipboard. I think that's the easiest way, or paste, pasteboard, whichever OS you're using. Um, and you saw the index. Your modals are the things that you're seeing popping up. So re-export. I do the re-exports for prettiness, just to look pretty. Um, and then right here we have... Here's your modal details, your link overlay, which is what you're seeing right here. That's why all of this is a link. Um, your modal define the object that you're passing in based on photo view. We're getting the file, we're getting the preview, and we're loading. So each one of these images, these cells right here, are all part of the details modal. So there's your image that it's displaying. So there's your link overlay preview. That's what you're seeing. So when you click on it, boop. that's a re-export because again, pretty. Here's your see how little we put here. So it's very easy to get past the entry points. And this is the toolbar that you see. It's across the top right there. So no, nothing crazy. Then we're going to go to our public view, which is what we're working in right now. Now I'll probably, we'll have a refactor session where I will go through and divide all of this up into smaller pieces, but I wanted to get it working. I wanted to get it where we could go and actually view this image so that I can hurry up and put it out there, even though it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Yeah, it's being generated. Um, but at least we could start sharing images. Um, so, I guess I don't really need that. All right, now, user not doing anything right now. That's just your default landing page. So, when you come to the dashboard, this is what you're seeing. And what will probably happen is this side menu will kind of go away. Um, the side menu will kind of need, I mean, this right here will, can kind of go away because this is kind of the de facto go-to. Now, and then your main index page, this is re-export for pretty. Followed by your provider. Now, this is the coup de gras, the main piece, the things that I keep bringing up because I get a lot of questions about this. So I'm going, I do these review sessions to kind of get to this as this is the crux of, of everything. So that's just a, a master provider because I am an extraordinarily lazy developer and I don't want to put these everywhere all the time. So I created one component with every provider that I needed to be application wide. Now, if you notice form provider is not in here because I don't use it all the time. Form provider is just an increment or a um, accumulator. So I can have one of those forms like a type form does it. When you answer a question, you move to the next page, answer a question, move to the next page. Answer the so form provider just does that for you. So you just define your form and it goes through and it adds it and it accumulates across. And then at the end of it, you can do form provider not value. You can get all your values back. Um, so I don't need that all the time. And then, but these I do, your API provider, which is right here. And this is, this is how I get to app, right? This is the provider that does everything that I need to do. This is, it's got shortcuts to all the different properties and the one-off. So if I do have something I need to get to, that's not one of these three majors right here, like avatar if we have it if we use the avatar service which is neat um or real time well not necessarily real time. that's built into app right models but anything that i need to get to that's not one of these three i can call client dot or i can call provider use api dot client i can get that right back so it takes this and adds it to the value so that every time i call use api it's returning this to me There we go. I'll get two. And documents is kind of the same thing. There's my AppRight model provider. I know naming naming's hard, but you'll be okay. Me, I was okay. Um, that's why we have these things called as. 
So right here, use API, photos, likes, there's the documents, there's my database ID, there's my collection ID with photo and like. Um, and then I create the same kind of concept. In fact, I could come out here and do All right, so that creates a the same kind of thing that we did for um, the API, where I created a client and then I had the new type. I just don't want to reinstantiate objects all over the place constantly. And if I just use client, I kind of have to do that over and over again. So I created one place for API so that I don't have to create new objects over and over again all over the place. Um, Flash is the little message that pops up at the screen, but if you look, Flash is using... Um, a lot of shortcuts, but it's that little toast. Instead of toast comes from here up, these are the little bars that come from here down. Apple guy. This is the form accumulator. As you see, it's just an object and set values. And then there, I, I want to extend this to do a pin values and things like that, but for right now, um, we're not really using it. So session. So this is what we look at. So I, I, I go ahead and cache the session. I know AppRite does some of this too, but... I was thinking that I may want to add things to that session and have that session saved off as well. Um, settings, you saw that it's just an object and that data right there is coming back to our local storage or memory cache, depending on if you go back to data slash index.ts. Um, and then storage is a shortcut. And this is a pretty good definition of, of, of what a provider is capable of. Not just API is a good one too, but this is also really good. So our bucket ID for the file is photos. Um, we're not actually using any of these. So bye, -bye. Um, Then we have our handler. So these are the actions that you can take on storage, whether it's uploading a file, download, whatever. So we have upload a file, get the file itself, uh, the file object, um, preview and get the preview version of the file or get the full view version of the file. And if you look, I use API here. So this is inside of that provider on index. So here's storage and here is API provider. So that's inside of there and whatnot. So if you look down here, I'm using the storage that this right here, that. So we're grabbing that inside of storage because storage. Um, and then we're creating some shortcut functions. Get storage, I get file, bucket ID, ID, passing the ID, preview, view. That way, I don't have to write out the same, I don't have to do a wait storage over and over again. I can just do what I think is divine. So I don't need to call the use storage from the API. I have a shortcut. I can extend this to do other things. Maybe I want a, a file cache. Maybe I want a um, an ordering by, or maybe I want to query something different and put together all the pieces. Like this would be a great place to do the meta stuff when we do a refactor. Like I can say get file, and then it's not just going to get the file, but it's also going to get the metadata associated with that file put them all together and then hand them back and we can clean up a lot of code that way. Um, and then that client is just key magic of you get preview and upload. And there it is just like API did. So that's our providers. Now, like I said, what that is, that's basically react hooks. If you go to react dev, you can go read up more on hooks and context and providers. And that will give you better insight into exactly what we're doing here. Um, then we have our router. Pretty self-explanatory. The router does a little, does the same kind of check as the outline as the layout does, and then it does that magic. Which ReactRouter.com, I think, for the one that I'm using. And then there's admin in here. I haven't gotten to it yet. Right. So ignore that guy. And then the user one is session and photo. So that's what you're seeing right. Here. This is the user's router, which we included in the layout. Remember. Open look. Boop. 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 There it is. So we've we've handed off things that we don't need to worry about anymore. Your theme. So I use something called Nord. I love the Nord color scheme. There's our button for toggling. So we have this guy right here now. All right. Yay. Um. We could make that also a setting, for example, so it would save what you wanted it to be. And theme is all of the custom CSS, at our 
JS to CSS or whatever that style components kind of thing is. So we can go through here and you can see I've created a bunch of input fields, select fields, text fields, and things like that. And that's what theme is. Your hooks, now these are all of the hooks from all of the providers created in a simple file because it looks better, in my opinion, doing import curly brace use, use, use from hooks. These are our custom types. As you see, we got dot PNG dot SVG here. Um, we need to add any file type that we JPG. All right. Main is our entry point. Pretty easy. And that's Vite. So not as complicated as you would think, but also not as simple as it could be. So it, it's a living template. It'll keep updating as I build more and more apps on it. I'm working on several different, I'm working on a, a side project with Aditya, who is also a member of the AppRite team. And so the, the template will start changing and evolving. And I also encourage lots and lots of pull requests. And again, I'll... There's the template. Boop. And I'll be making some updates to that soon, actually. Um, and with that, kind of it for now. Like... So what we should do next thing, we're, so next session on Thursday, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to do an unlike. Uh, but first, I think we should clean up the public view, create it as a folder, move it to an index, and then break it out into pieces, and we can see how the refactoring or how we can do smaller components to make it more manageable. Um, and then we are going to do the unlike button. So if I like it, regardless of what my user ID is or my account ID or whatever, I should be able to unlock it, like it as well and also the share button. So next one will be refactoring the public view. Then we're going to do a like button, unlike button, followed by a the share, which I think the first version of share, just because I don't want to integrate with a whole bunch of social networks, is to just going to copy it to your pasteboard or kind of like GitHub style. Like. Like right here do like this, right? You just boop. That way, by creating the drop down of the toolbox like that, we will also be able to add Twitter and Facebook or whatever we want to to do that share later on. But right now, we're trying to get to the infamous and cliche MVP for release. Um, so a little bit, five minutes early here, which I think is okay. We've gone through a lot today. We fixed some things up. Thank you, everybody, for your help. Um, join us on Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, as well as following us off its hours on Thursdays. If you go to appright.io, scroll down, get to your Discord button, and join. Send me a message. I am west.io on all of Discord, or just Wes on the AppRight servers. Um, also, make sure you visit appright.io and sign up for a free cloud beta. And we're excited to see what you guys build with it. Um, please make any pull requests to the Pluck.io repository or the template or AIM. Throw some stars. You know the you know the drill. Follow me on Twitter. My username is Westcope W E S S C O P E, um, and Twitch. As you're all here, so I don't got to give you the username. My Twitch username is also Westcope W E S S C O P E. Or you can follow along on later viewings, uh, post lives, as you will, which will be on YouTube.com/slash at Fresh Full Stack. Thank you again, everybody, for joining. I hope you have a great day, and look forward to Thursday when we get to put some shares and likes and unlikes in there. On that note, cheers.